All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video as Ali plays. I hope you guys are all safe out there. And today we're going to be doing a Bone Keeper video. So this champion can hit really hard. I'm going to showcase it to you guys. Uh, we're going to go over skills, artifacts, mastery. He's going to showcase her in arena, showing how hard she's capable of hitting. She is a sniper. You guys are saying she's not. <laughs> you can't single target nuke. Snipe. So yeah, she's a sniper, Bone Keeper. And she has two very hard hitting abilities. And I'll showcase that to you guys. And uh, before we get started, if you guys are new to the channel, Make sure you guys subscribe as we make our way to 10,000 subscribers. And let's get started. All right, so here is Bone Keeper. So she was on my list of the of the uh, single target, like the heaviest single target hitters in Arena for Epics. And she was on that list. And I actually have <laughs> finished working on her, so now I have her ready to go. So she has, she's one of those underlooked champions in the Orcs faction. Because her, if you look at her kit, her kit does not look very good. But um, Precision Strike... This ability, you can see that there's potential in her of doing a, dealing a lot of damage, right? Because this attack deals 35% extra critical damage, and it's on a three-turn cooldown. So I did actually want to book this out just to showcase her strengths. And I also, during testing, um, had to book out Killing Haze. So this ability actually does a lot of damage. It basically does the same amount of damage as Precision, precision Strike. But it does it with two hits, so it plays an extra hit if the attack is critical. So this ability can probably deal like 150, 140,000 damage around there. In hundred thousands um, with both hits, not one of them. This one does it with one hit. So I think it is actually worth booking out these abilities. But uh, for newer players, I actually wouldn't recommend working on Bonekeeper. Because she's not going to be doing much for your account. And it's actually very hard to get her to have those numbers. So keep that in mind. Unless you just want to do it just for fun. Battery, you actually do not need to actually book it. So this ability actually just places a decrease in defense. It doesn't really do much damage. Multipliers are really low. So that's the reason why I, I did not um, fully book this out. And also, I don't need a, a single target decrease defense. I have champions that can do that with AoEs. All right, so let's move on, guys. Let's go to the artifacts. <clears throat> so I am running over with one broken set. So the broken set is going to be the Lifesteal set and the Relentless. Um, the subsets you're going to be looking for for Bonekeeper. He's going to be attack percentage, crit rate percentage, crit damage percentage. And honestly, I wouldn't even build with any accuracy because you don't really want that debuff. Because you should have other champions that can place a decrease defense. And also for also you want her to have some speed so she can actually she can actually have her turn before she dies. You guys take a look at my substats here. We got some pretty good pieces. Uh, for the primary, I want the 80% crit damage. And the attack percentage up here as a primary. And we want the speed boost. Now you can also go for attack percentage boost if you want her to do even more damage but it's kind of hard to get her turn off in arena if you're running her without speed boots uh let's take a look at the accessories i have a level 12 a plus 12 ring 170 and then we have a lot of attack percentage on there uh crit damage primary on the amulet and we got the resistance banner so she doesn't get frozen well what's going to happen anyways but you know what i mean and we try to look for speed and attack percentage as a substat so whatever has the most is use it doesn't really matter about the primary on the banner as long as you have the good subs well it depends on the champion this champion doesn't need accuracy so it doesn't really matter uh, let's take a look at the total stats so 26,000 hp so that's very low 4,561 attack now we can actually get that a little bit higher if we actually get the um get the ring to plus 16 <laughs> but we're not going to be doing that man we're not going to be doing that. I think the Artifact Enhancement event is done. Maybe. I think it might be done. Uh, 168 speed. That is very low. 102% <laughs> critical rate. 234% crit damage. And then you can add 35% on top of that uh, when she does her A2 ability. So she basically has like 269% when she does that A2 ability. Resistance is 183. And that's basically it. Uh, let's go over the Masteries. So I am running her with the offense route and defense route. So you went all the way down. We got false execution. Now you can also get Helm Smasher, but we want the false execution for more critical damage. And we went all the way down. We got retribution and we got deterrence. Now I always say this: don't copy paste uh, masteries. Just make sure you do it based on your team composition. But these uh, look to be the best uh, for Bone Keeper. All right, now we're going to be heading to Arena, and we want to showcase her dealing some damage. Refresh the list. Um, Let's see what we can find. Let's try to find a formidable team. Uh, right here, man. This team will probably beat us. So we're probably going to lose because she's not very good against Rotos. And we don't really have anybody to kill Rotos. But either way, we want to show some DPS. So we're going to bring Madame Saris to uh, place a decreased defense. And <clears throat> that allows her to hit even harder. Cue the music, man. Cue the music. All right. We're going to boost her attack here. And now we're going to strip all the buffs. We're going to strip... Madame Saris. 
I mean, that's just a lot too, but we did everybody else. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this ability. So attack one enemy, uh, deals 35% extra damage. And I would go after Rotos, but this is just gonna allow him to counter and kill her. So we're actually gonna go after Arbiter. She is frozen. Um, let's see how much damage you do there. 95,315. I've actually seen her hit harder than this uh, before. We'll try to provoke these two. We got one of them. And I actually do want to show off her, her uh, A3 ability as well. Let's kill that Rotos, man. He's going to come back to life. She's going to bring everybody back. We got to get rid of this. That's a high resistance Duchess, man. <laughs> All right, so she's she's back, so we're gonna go after her again, and we're gonna do the double hit. So, oh, she's under veil, so we gotta go after her. So most likely we won't crit. Yeah, we won't crit there. So yeah, so we gotta kill Duchess, man. Like I got my own Duchess, but she's annoying, man. Not as annoying as uh, as a Siffy though, right? Siffy, aka Syphilis. Let's try to place that fear on her. No, we can't. Dude, you know my madame has 420 accuracy? That's pretty crazy how she can just resist it like that. All right, so we got it back, man. See that three turn cooldown is very quick. And yeah, we're gonna go after Arbiter again. 62,000, that's without the decreased defense. Uh, we'll try to strip the buffs again. This time it actually worked. And we gotta start killing um, that's just level two, man. <clears throat> Fortunately, unfortunately, uh, Bonekeeper has disadvantage in terms of affinity on Duchess. Yeah, I'll show you guys her basic attack. It's very weak, so this guy probably won't even counter. He was supposed to counter. <laughs> and yeah, we gotta kill Duchess before she starts uh, summoning, uh, reviving everybody again. Oh my god, Duchess. Yeah, she can't even crit on her, man. Okay, she's dead. We're gonna bring her back to life. Yeah, we gotta kill Duchess, man. This fight's going on too long, man. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Crit. Yes, there we go. Double hit. She didn't crit on the second one though. All right, we're gonna put this on auto and this fight is basically over. Uh, I wanna showcase another fight, but this time without Rotos. And I actually wanna uh, do a lot of damage. So we're gonna go against, um, we're gonna against a weaker team. We're gonna try to bring in Michal too, in place of um, Tormin. We'll bring in Michal so we can actually give the increased crit damage. So that should get her closer to 300% critical damage uh, with, his, with his buff on there. You can also use Whirlim. All right, so there's the win. Rel Keeper, man. <laughs> Why do I feeling that I would actually lose to this team? <laughs> Alright, Tormin, you're gone. And we're going to bring in... I said Michal, right? Yeah, you can also use Warlim for that roll. For the crit damage. I'm pretty sure Warlim does that. I forgot, man. I forgot a lot about Warlim. I don't like using him. Alright, there we go. We got first turn. Uh, let's do this. We got increased crit damage. We got increased attack. Uh, let's strip away one of the buffs. Uh, okay, we just killed Ali Plays right there. Okay, we got decreased defense, but he, he has ally protection, so that sucks. So, uh, we're actually going to go after him, because he can't ally protect himself, right? So, we have 55,000 damage. That's actually not good, man. Um, I've actually got her to hit way harder than this. I don't know what's going on right now. Oh, he didn't even have decreased defense on. I forgot that he uh, cleanses it. Okay, let's do that double hit. So 97, 87, that's almost like 200k damage right there. That's pretty crazy. Okay, we'll do one more, one more guys, one more guess. 
Okay, let's see how much damage she does against Mountain King. So she has a neutral affinity to him. And we'll apply all these buff all these debuffs on him. And all the buffs on her. Here it is. I'm gonna hit him once. Alright, there we go. Decrease defense. Alright, so here it is, guys. Here it is. Moment of truth. How much damage can Bonekeeper do against Mountain King on her A2? 171,000. <laughs> 171,000 damage. That's pretty crazy. So for Spider's Den, she's actually not a good champion for Spider's Den. She just has single target attacks. So she doesn't really do much there. Same with Fire Knight. Like in Fire Knight, she does. She only has single target attacks. Um, but let's see how much damage she can actually do against him. So we're going to take out Knight Errant because that was from the last showcase. We're going to bring her in. And we're going to take out Apothecary. I was using the top off Knight Errant before. And we're going to bring in um, Madame Ceres. And what we're gonna do, uh, let's showcase some damage in the first in the first wave. I'm gonna manual it actually. So this is stage 20, so these uh, numbers are not artificially fluctuated. Let's put the increased attack. We got the crit damage up. Let's place a decrease defense. And we're just gonna AoE here. Alright, here we go. So personally, I like using her Killing Haze ability in dungeons, but we're gonna go ahead and use this one so we can get it off cooldown plus 35% extra crit damage. Um, we're gonna go after Errol, 151,000 damage. That is very nice. And we're gonna try Killing Haze next. So let's boost the turn meter here. They're probably gonna go after her, aren't they? Let's try to reduce her turn meter. AoE. All right, let's do Killing Haze now. Uh, this time we're gonna go after, I think it was Preserver, right? Dude, that's over 200,000 damage right there. So Killing Haze actually looks like it might be the better ability. Cause the multipliers, if you think about it, are higher because Preserver, are, I mean her um, <laughs> her A2 automatically gives her the extra extra crit damage right 35 percent that one doesn't even have the extra crit damage and she's doing that so that's some pretty nice numbers um i actually do want to do some more testing here so we're going to stay we're going to remain here let's try to get some weaken off off yeah let's get some weaken uh let's try to get the decrease defense when it comes back her ability is ready but we're not going to use it so let's use her basic attack so she did twenty three thousand. so multiplier is not that high for her basic attack Alright, use basic here. Alright, let's do it. Decrease defense. Uh, she has increased crit damage, so we're gonna wait out, wait out for another turn. Increase crit damage here. And we're gonna put the attack up. That's what we've been waiting to do. There's a counterattack from her retribution. And let's kill this guy. No, we couldn't kill him. Okay, we're getting pretty close. There's a Retribution. See, Retribution is a very good mastery uh, if it actually procs. Um, we're going to go ahead and go after this guy again. 149,000 damage. Boost the turn meter. We're going to use Killing Haze one more time. And then we're going to go straight to the Fire Knight. All right, here we go. Should we save this? Yeah, we're going to save this for a Fire Knight. We actually want that double hit on his shield. 53,000. That's not too bad, but sometimes, I mean, that's like with the, with the, you know. Okay, we're gonna throw this on auto now. Hopefully she actually uses her abilities, no AI issues. Let's find out. So she has Killing Haze up. Let's see if she actually uses it. She went in with a basic attack, guys. Let's test this out. All right, so she has two abilities there, right? We're gonna throw on auto, and she went with her basic attack again. Let's see what she does when the shield is actually down. I don't know what's going on with playing with these AI issues on these lesser known champs. Okay, basic attack again. What the f Something's going on, man. Okay, we're gonna place it on here to lock, to put the target, right? Target lock. Let's 
Let's see what happens. She's probably gonna use base. Oh, Killing Haze, there it is, Killing Haze. Does she ever use her A2 or no? There we go, so now she's using it. So we actually had to target lock him in order for her to use it. Which is kind of stupid, we shouldn't have to do that. Because we want teams to, to work on auto, right? But anyways, people are not gonna use um, Bone Keeper for dungeons basically right they're going to use her faction wars she can do a lot of damage there and they're going to use her yeah usually faction wars are manual and they're going to use her in arena if they actually want her to nuke um not nuke sorry snipe <laughs> you guys kept correcting me on that okay there it is now she's using her abilities there we go that's a lot of damage man no roto's numbers but that's a lot of damage wait is it is it off of him oh it was off of him okay good i got i got kind of pissed off at plarium there Okay, let's click it. Yo, five minutes is way too long. Oh, that's some nice damage there, man. Okay, she did 1.2 mil. That's actually very nice. Especially since Michal does uh, AoE damage, so his, his damage is supposed to be higher than hers. Um, we'll go back to map. We'll do one more dungeon. We're gonna be doing Ice Golem's Peak. Now, I do not think that she's good for Ice Golem's Peak uh, because she's gonna push that threshold too quickly. But well, we're still gonna take her there. And we're gonna skip straight to the Ice Golem, guys. All right, here we are, guys. One minute, 39 seconds. Uh, she actually did die. Obviously, she's gonna die. <laughs> and uh, you, as you can see, I don't have Michelle with me here, so she's gonna have the extra, extra she's not gonna have the extra 30% critical damage. Okay, there's Killing Haze. That was a lot of damage, man. I actually like killing Haze. Prefer I prefer killing Haze over other ability. So that was a Rotos number right there. You saw you did 212,000 damage. She did around the same damage. Ooh, 179,000. Yeah, I like killing Haze better. But the thing about killing Haze, you actually do need to uh, to build her with a 100% crit rate uh, to take full advantage of it, right? Yeah, but they're gonna push the threshold, man. This guy's gonna keep using Frigid Vengeance. Everybody's dying. Okay, Rotos, block revive. Let's go. Come on, man. Block revive. There we go. Block revives down. 192,000 damage. 130. Rotos, chill out, man. This is not your showcase. This is Bone Keeper showcase, man. Yeah, I feel like Bone Keeper actually might be one of the hardest hitting um, orcs in the game. Um... I mean, the Orb Faction in general is not, like, very uh, DPS heavy, right? Frigid Vengeance here. She's probably dead now. Yeah, she dies to way too much, man. <laughs> yeah, so I say she is, she's like, she passes for Fire Knight, but, I mean, for Ice Golem, but um, she's not really one that you would... Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to bring her in, right? There's obviously way better options than her. There we go. 433,000 damage. She was dead most of the time. So it was, a, it was kind of hard to showcase it there. She has affinity advantage here. But that's not really the fight for her, right? All right, so for clan boss, I mean, people will find ways to utilize her, right? She has that decreased defense on her A1. I think she might be good with a counterattack team as well. But I don't think she's like a top tier. There's obviously way better options than her. And maybe if she has a decreased attack on her basic, she would be viable there. Um, she would probably dish out a lot of damage. You build her as a DPS, but uh, she's going to be very squishy. You're better off using a defense-based champion than using her. As again, Rina, she is good. Faction Wars. Um, oh, I can't showcase there. I was actually using her in Faction Wars. Uh, she was dealing a lot of damage, but we don't really have anybody there to boost her attack for my team. Yeah, you kind of have to like build a team to protect her, uh, things like that. Vrask was a very good option with her. Cause he he was um, he can give he was topping her off topping off her her HP. Uh, Dragon's Lair she actually has affinity disadvantage on the twenty dungeon, so you don't really you, honestly you don't even want to use her there anyways. Same with Spiders Den she's not going to be good for campaign she's not really a campaign farmer. So we're going to go ahead and review her. She's not like a top tier epic or anything. 
But she's a heavy hitter. That's what she's there for. I wouldn't recommend actually working on her, but if you want to, you can go ahead. So for arena offense, I think that she is... Uh, I'll give her a five. Clan boss, I'll give her a four. I think she can be very good, but obviously there's better options than her. Spider's Den, I'm going to drop her down. I'm going to say she's actually useless in Spider's Den, man. I actually don't see any use for her. Uh, Dragon's Lair. I don't know why she's high. I guess for her earlier stages, Dragon's Lair, she can be good. So I'm going to give her a three. You know what? I'm going to have to change that. I'm going to give her a four because she has that decreased defense. It's a single target fight, right? Campaign locations. Um, I'm going to give her a three for campaign location. Mentor's Labyrinth, I'll give her a four. Fire Knight's Castle. I'm going to give her a three. I think that's fair. That's a fair evaluation on um, Bone Keeper there. Um, the good thing is that she doesn't have like stupid AI. <laughs> I thought she did in the beginning because she was using her ability, but I guess she uses it if they have decreased defense. Seemed like it because he had decreased defense on and then she started using it. Or maybe when I clicked on him. Uh, arena defense, I think she's acceptable, but Force Heave, I'll give her a four. Ice Golem's Peak, I'll give her a four for earlier stages, but later stages, she's going to drop off a little bit. She has affinity advantage, but she pushes the thresholds, man. Pushes the threshold. I'm going to actually drop her to a three for Ice Golem's Peak. Void Keep, I'll give her a four. Spirit Keep, I'll give her a three. And Fashion Wars, we're going to give her a five. Um, drop to a four. Uh, just for DPS purposes, she's going to be good in Fashion Wars. Uh, pure crit rate. <laughs> okay. Okay. You need some attack, man. It's going to be kind of useless. All right, guys. So overall, do I advise you guys to go ahead and work on Bone Keeper? No, I'm trying to showcase to you guys how much damage you can actually do. Uh, she was hitting Rotos numbers for uh, some fights, right? So that's pretty nice. And the guy's just for people who actually want to work on her. Uh, maybe probably probably for Faction Wars or something, but there are better options for sure. If you guys found this video helpful or entertaining, make sure you guys drop a like. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. I'm Tyrone. I need everybody to subscribe to the homie Ali Al Plays. And that's non-negotiable.